On last Friday's episode of In the Wolf Den with Will and Bob, we discussed the trailer for the upcoming Fantastic Four reboot. It looked... interesting to say the least. Click here to see our full opinion on it. But it got me thinking, this movie definitely seems like it's trying to hide the fact that it's based on a comic book, and it's definitely trying to be taken more seriously. Which, if it does go down that route and it does it well, that's fine. But a lot of comic book movies that go down that route often suffer from the exact same cliches. These are just little things that filmmakers will often put into their movies, and a lot of people won't even notice them. But someone who's anal retentive, like, say, me, would notice them. So I present to you my top five least favorite comic book movie cliches. Let's start with one that doesn't really bother me so much, as much as it does just makes me confused as to why they do it. Number five. When a movie doesn't call their hero or villain, by their comic book code name. Usually this happens to the villain. Question, who did Anne Hathaway play in The Dark Knight Rises? You're probably thinking, Catwoman, obviously. Well, not exactly. They only ever refer to her as Selena Kyle on screen, and only make a subtle reference here and there to the fact that she's a cat burglar, never specifically Catwoman. The same thing happened in Spider-Man 3. Sandman, Venom, and the Green Goblin were never referred to as such. Always Flint Marco, Eddie Brock, and Harry Osborn. In Ang Lee's Hulk movie, he's never referred to as THE Hulk. Bruce Banner calls himself A Hulk once throughout the whole picture, and that's about it. Along the same lines, Emil Blonsky is never referred to as THE Abomination in The Incredible Hulk. Only once, Samuel Stern refers to him as AN Abomination. Come to think of it, in the Iron Man movies, the Mandarin is the only supervillain referred to by his supervillain name. Whiplash and Ironmonger are not. This doesn't really happen all that often, and to be honest, most of the time it's really not noticeable in the grand scheme of things. It just seems silly to me because what you're basically telling me is that you're okay with giving your protagonist a code name and letting all the superpowers and weird costumes run amok, but giving your villain a code name is a bit too over the top? Please. Number four. The forced connection storyline. This is when the filmmakers decide to force a connection between the protagonist and another character, usually the antagonist, to try and add artificial depth. Like in Batman 89 when they made the Joker kill Bruce Wayne's parents, or in Spider-Man 3 when they made Sandman kill Uncle Ben. All it does is take a simple storyline and make it just a little bit more complicated. And the more complicated it gets, the harder it is to follow. We all know the origin of Superman. Boy gets put in a rocket, shot towards Earth, and uses his powers for good. Except in Man of Steel, where he's the first natural born child in over a century, where he has the whole blueprint for Kryptonian life in his bloodstream or some stupid shit like that. And please don't get me started on this forced destiny trend that's been infesting movies like The Amazing Spider-Man or the 2014 Ninja Turtles. Where the hero was always meant to be a hero, they were designed to be a hero or some garbage like that that completely removes the everyman aspect of these characters. Part of the reason why your average fan prefers the TV or movie versions of a superhero as opposed to the comics is because they simplify everything. Imagine for a minute that they made a faithful movie about Hawkeye, and they went through everything. The fact that he was a circus performer, the fact he was a thief, the fact that he was deaf, the fact that he's not deaf anymore, the fact that he was once Goliath. You wouldn't like that. By contrast, if they would make a Hawkeye movie about a guy who uses a bow and arrow against bad guys, you'd probably get behind that. Mainly because that's already Arrow. Making it more complicated just defeats the purpose of making a mass market piece of entertainment. And forcing a connection between these characters just cheapens the development of all of them. So please stop doing that. Number three. Love interests. Oh my god, love interests. This is more of a problem with action movies in general where they try to shoehorn in a love story between all of the violence. But I can name several vanilla action movies that don't stop everything to force a kissing scene on us. Now to be fair, most superheroes already have pre-made love interests readily available, so putting them into the story usually works fairly seamlessly. And recent Marvel movies like The Avengers and Captain America the Winter Soldier and Guardians of the Galaxy really didn't have love interest stories at all. But for a character like, say, Batman, who doesn't have a regular love interest and who's had to have ones made up for him for the movies, it just feels out of place and forced. Now we all know why movie studios do this, it's to attract a female audience to what is typically perceived as a man movie. But that's just stupid. Women don't go to these movies to see love stories, they go to see people get punched and to see sh** blow up. And besides, Marvel has found a much simpler way to get women to see these movies, so just knock it off with the love crap. Number two. This one's a little different from the others in that it doesn't make the movie more serious as it does more silly. I'm talking about when a movie stops everything to show you the hero's logo, 
on fire. As far as I can tell, this all started, oddly enough, in The Crow, a movie that is widely acclaimed for being dark and moody and kind of sad. The Crow is a character who is hell-bent on getting revenge, but he's willing to postpone that revenge in order to draw this little number at a kerosene and a match. This later happened again in the Daredevil movie, and I don't even want to get into why this is dumb. And this also happened in The Dark Knight Rises. When did Batman have the time to set this up in between him flying back from the middle of the desert in India and breaking into No Man's Land Gotham City. The only movie this ever really made sense in was the 2005 Fantastic Four movie, but it happened at the very end, and by then I was already not really happy with the movie, and this was just icing on the annoyed cake for me. Special shout out goes to Batman 89, where our title character decides to stop fighting the Joker for a minute and fly his Batwing all the way up to the moon to form his symbol in the sky. It may not be fire, but it's just as infuriating. Number one. This is a trend I blame solely on Spider-Man 2, and that is the hero taking off his f***ing mask every five minutes. We all know why they do this. Oh, we paid too much money for Robert Downey Jr. to cover up his face the whole time. Or, it's hard for Tobey Maguire to act behind that mask. You can't see his eyes or his mouth. Well, first off, when I go see Iron Man, I'm not paying to see Robert Downey Jr. I can see him in a whole bunch of other movies. I'm paying to see Iron Man. Besides, Jon Favreau pretty much solved this problem when he came up with the POV shots in the first Iron Man. So you don't have to have the mask coming up every five minutes so we can see Downey. And I wasn't trying to single out Tobey Maguire because I don't actually think he said that. But any actor who finds it hard to act behind a mask is probably just a bad actor. Hugo Weaving wore his mask throughout V for Vendetta and he was fantastic in it. Christian Bale spent the last 20 to 30 minutes of The Dark Knight as Batman in full costume. It's gotten to a point now where superheroes barely show up in their own movies. Batman wasn't Batman until an hour into The Dark Knight Rises and there was barely any Iron Man in Iron Man 3. Iron Man didn't even save the day in that movie, Pepper did. Directors, just put your actor in full costume, mask and all, and tell them to shut up and act. We go to see superhero movies to see superheroes. That shouldn't be such a novel concept. Anyway, those are just some cliches that really grind my gears when it comes to superhero movies. Every time I think we've gone past them, one or two pop up again and we're back to square one. One day, somebody will make a comic book movie that bucks all of these trends. But until then, we just got a deal. What do you guys think? What are some cliches that you're sick and tired of seeing in your comic book based movies? Let me know down below or anywhere on social media. And as always, like if you like, subscribe if you really like, share this video with your friends. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. First things first, forget about reading anything starring a Marvel or DC superhero. The academic society has long since moved past the point of accepting a mainstream superhero as serious literature. You may get lucky and meet a teacher who will let you read Dark Knight Returns, but that's about it. This looks nothing like a Fantastic Four movie. It doesn't even look like a superhero movie. It looks like a... I got a lot of Inception out of it. Yeah. I was getting a huge Inception. Yeah, movie. or Interstellar more specifically. That's what I meant. Like. I always get that, those confused... I don't know why.